about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Appreciate God for the life of the man of God, Reverend Julius Omomola. Thank you so much and your dear wife. Such an honor and it's a very humbling experience to be here again. Um, while I sat there, I just relieved wonderful memories, very touching memories of yesteryears. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap again. <laughs> Hallelujah. New Heritage Baptist Church, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we pray? Lift your hands and ask the Lord to give you a very definite encounter. In the name of Jesus, ask him to speak to you. Declare that your heart is opened, receptive, ever willing to learn, even by his spirit. Someone pray. Father, visit me. Visit me. Let your light indeed rest upon my heart. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Speak to our hearts, O God, and we pray that you will bless us indeed. Let the sick be healed. Amen. Let the oppressed be delivered. Amen. Let age-long captivities bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray that everyone who is connected or everyone who is here represented will return back with a marvelous testimony. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. Let's go straight to the word of God. Two scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Um, just to lend my voice again with um, Reverend and the leadership of the church to remind you that the sessions continue. It's a long span of... Um, teachings I only have a short session out of the whole thing so commit yourself to finish up the entire uh, span of the prayer and the teaching weekend the week it's a week there week long activity and so um, my sessions only represent a small pie bigger the whole program so please do well to commit yourself as much as you can we still are here tomorrow morning, I understand. And then my final session tomorrow night. Matthew 4, 16. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. The Bible says, The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadows of death, light is sprung up. If that is you, shout a loud Amen. amen. The second scripture, John chapter 8 and verse 32. John 8, 32. It says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'll read it one more time. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. For those of you who have followed our teachings closely, I think in the last one month, um, 
it's been a burden in my heart as God has granted me the grace to travel teaching on this very subject of light because I believe that our excelling in the kingdom depends on the kind and the quality of the knowledge that we have hallelujah Amen. no believer is truly going to manifest in experience the power the grace the glory of god in ignorance in fact even if you act action in ignorance is not faith what gives your action credibility is that it is acted based the action is based on understanding i submit to you that so many people across the body of christ are very ignorant as to the way the system of the kingdom works now the church of the lord jesus christ has very sincere people men and women sincere families sincere ministers of god sincere businessmen but not many people have taken out time to really understand the requirement for an excelling life so our christian experience is largely full of gaps and we hope that we will stumble across information or access to some kind of light that can help us produce beauty and color and you see that's not the way it works hallelujah Amen. first timothy chapter 2 please from verse 1 to 4 very profound scripture from paul first timothy chapter 2 please give us from verse 1 to 4 the verse of emphasis is verse 4 but let's start from verse 1 first timothy 2 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty, verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Let's read verse 4 together if you can see it. Ready? One to read who will have all men to be saved and to come on to the knowledge of the truth one more time who will have all men to be saved and to come on to the knowledge of the truth so i'll be teaching uh, today and tomorrow and the title of my teaching is ye shall know the truth hallelujah so the bible here says that there are two principal desires in the heart of God. Number one, that all men be saved. When it has to do with salvation, there are many dimensions captured in salvation. Healing is an aspect of salvation. Deliverance from oppression is an aspect of salvation. Breakthrough, restoration, but specifically salvation from sin, from hell from death and the grip of satan the translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light the kingdom of his dear son this is what the bible is saying here that god desires for all men regardless tribe regardless gender regardless your social pedigree he desires that all men be saved and then in addition to being saved this immediately tells you that what you call the new birth experience is not the whole experience it only ushers you to begin the journey of your spirit work are we together now when we believe that all it takes is to give our lives to jesus as we say and we come there we are going to live very frustrating and ineffective christian lives this is the experience of many people when you say those who are saved if you know you've confessed jesus as your lord and savior most people will stand up but if you ask how many people are truly living a life of purpose victory grace enjoying their christian experience and how many people have seen that which is written become true in their lives very few people will rise up you see that so the bible says god desires number one that all men be saved and then number two that all men come on to the knowledge of the truth on to the knowledge of the truth 
that means you can be saved and not know the truth you can be saved genuinely saved and not know the truth the truth about your victory in christ the truth about how faith works the truth about the devil the truth about god the truth about life are we together the truth about your health the truth about your destiny he says that the moment a man takes that initial step to make jesus lord of his life your next assignment as far as manifesting the victory of the kingdom is concerned is to begin to pursue truth and when jesus was speaking he said sanctify them by thy truth he says thy word is truth thy word is truth thy word is truth hallelujah conferences like these are designed to be number one times of intense prayer where we submit ourselves to pray but conferences like this are a feast of light where God brings life applicable truths truths that will serve as ladders and help us to ascend heights not just in the spirit but in life and in destiny you can sample two believers one by my left and the other by my right and all of them will testify that they have been saved yet you look at the quality of their lives spiritually financially even within the context of society and you find out that one on one side may be living a very defeated Christian life a life that does not give a true representation of the victory that is in Christ whereas the other one is living such an excelling life a life that compels praise maybe I should tell us that it is important for us to know that our results and our excelling in the kingdom is important for God are we together now if you do not know this the the passion to press to see your life rise to a higher point of excellence may not be there let me give you three or four scriptures number one is Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16 ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt have lost its sever wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men 14 says ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all who are in the house final verse let your light so shine before men you can read it with me that they may see your good works and you see that now they will not glorify your father if they do not see your good works so you truly want God to be glorified is more than singing it in a special number singing be glorified as a song is wonderful but when your life does the singing it becomes a more powerful rendition are we together that when men see your good deeds they will glorify your father which is in heaven scripture number two galatians 1 24 simple but profound scripture galatians 1 24 let's read it together ready one to read and they glorified god in me one more time and they glorified god in me so god can be glorified in and through a man that your life becomes an epistle literally an epistle that when people look at your life they are compelled through the workings of the spirit in your life to give glory to god hallelujah are you ready for the third scripture ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 ephesians 3 and verse 10 let's read together ready one to read to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god so the bible tells us that the revealers of the wisdom of god are not spirits somewhere they are not angels somewhere it is the very church of the lord that is saddled with the responsibility of manifesting the manifold or multifaceted wisdom of god there is a level of wisdom 
that should emanate from the church are we together the bible calls it the wisdom of god final scripture john chapter 1 6 and 7 john chapter 1 is god helping us already john chapter 1 6 and 7 i'll read verse 6 then we'll read verse 7 together this is the universal mandate of every believer it doesn't matter if you are a pastor you are a businessman you are a career person you are a family person does not matter the geography of your assignment this right here should be the creed of every believer there was a man sent from God his name was John please read with me verse 7 ready one to read the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe there is something called witness of the light witness of the light witness of the light that a man can be the witness of the light that men through the efficacy of your witness might believe that means if my life and your life remains barren impotent we are robbing god of a dimension of glory that he should enjoy are we together now when the light the beauty the grace of god emanates from your life is more than just being a successful person that is too small a reason god would not invest his life invest his blood invest his name invest his holy spirit just to make men successful for the fun of it no the Bible says he does these things for his namesake. Hallelujah. Amen. It then means your life is a sermon that was prepared by God. And there was someone who had been mandated to understand and to listen to that sermon. If your life does not reveal the glory and the power of God, there is someone who may never have the opportunity to know God and to give praises to God in and through your life. The meaning of all this is that from tonight in the name of Jesus, your life will stop being an object of shame and reproach. That everything that has made God, men, doubt God in your life, it will change in this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. He desires that all men be saved. So you see, when a believer is not saved, trying to give that individual or when an individual is not saved and you are trying no matter what you do to an individual as an addition to improving his life if it comes before salvation you are wasting your time on that individual the profiting of any other spiritual investment on an individual it only becomes rich and wise if that individual is a believer are we together that means if you are mentoring somebody who is not even saved in the first place ultimately you are wasting your time because that person is still a bona fide candidate of darkness on legal ground satan has authority to perfect that person are we together the only escape route given officially that translates a man to a realm where it becomes illegal for satan and any unclean spirit to reach them is salvation you can pray for an unbeliever who is sick and he will be healed you can minister deliverance to a, an unbeliever who has all manner of demonic oppressions you can counsel an unbeliever but all these will prove to be temporary solutions before jesus died he healed but he still died that's to tell you that healing was not the ultimate before jesus died he still ministered to the sick but everybody who was healed everybody who was delivered had to be saved to be free are we together now so in order of priority your greatest passion for anyone you see is number one that they be saved now god will heal god will prosper but i'm saying every other investment and contribution to the life of an individual is truly from an eternal perspective a waste until that individual is saved now it can provide succor for instance if you go and help the less privileged are we together if you provide food and bread for them the bible says pure religion and undefiled is this you know to help the needy and the poor so there is a place for that 
But if you truly love an individual and you want to help that individual, your greatest commitment is to see that person saved. Getting individuals saved is not the issue of, is beyond just the passion to be evangelistic in your approach. Most believers have not learned the value of salvation to an individual's destiny. It's more than just escaping from hell. It's more than just having your name written in the Lamb's book of life. It is the only way. Are we together now? Yes. Your official exit from darkness, from the grip of Satan, and every other thing that has come with that darkness. So there are many people who will prefer to enjoy every other provision and blessing in the kingdom except the salvation of their souls. And somehow we have programmed ourselves to believe that if I put three people here and I minister healing for the one and the person is healed, we will rejoice and even roll on the ground and worship God. And I minister deliverance and demons are casted out of this one. And then to this one, I lead him to Jesus in our minds and subliminally we have been programmed if we are to arrange those miracles we usually will give credit to the miracle of healing because it is most charismatic and spectacular but in this conference god is helping us to understand that the greatest of the three has been the salvation of that man as quiet as basic as it looks a real translation just happened from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son hallelujah so god desires that all men be saved that means if your child is not saved it is your number one project if your husband is not saved don't just think and say lord give him a house those things are, are wonderful but from an eternal standpoint you see ladies and gentlemen if you if you do not if you do not have the lens of the spirit to interpret life you will focus your life and your attention on so many mundane things a man ceases to breathe in about 10 minutes medically speaking and the person is declared dead it does not matter what was working it only finds its value when you are alive are we together there are many people on their way to hell rich but on their way to hell healed but on their way to hell intelligent but they're on their way to hell so just praying for breakthrough and increase and prosperity is these things are all wonderful but verify that the individual is saved first then every other blessing now becomes an added advantage are we together so god desires we're walking that scripture now that all men be saved and whilst you are listening if you've not made how how do you get saved do you know as as simple as the matter of salvation is you will be surprised that the average believer cannot tell you how an individual becomes a believer you are not saved just because you came to church now coming to church increases your your potential to be saved because you have an opportunity to hear the word the gospel preached are we together an encounter with a pastor does not give you eternal life an encounter with a good church does not give you eternal life in fact an encounter with the bible does not give you eternal life this is a book that was produced by a publishing house it's a compendium of historic materials there are many people who are unsaved and they have more bibles than you in their homes some of them are historians some of them in fact their research that gave them phd was around religion and yet they are not saved they know more of Bible history than you may know in all your times of ministry together. And yet they are not saved. So when Jesus came, he made it clear and straight. The pathway to salvation. And I want you to just let me two or three minutes. God is helping the church to come into maturity. And I want to tell you without missing words how an individual gets saved before we continue so that if you have not passed through that route you can be sure you are not saved even if you were crying while the preacher was preaching you were still not saved there are people that jesus credited to they said they were not far from the kingdom standing near my house does not bring you inside my house are we together now there are beggars that hang around very nice houses it does not automatically qualify them there 
so nicodemus came to jesus by night john chapter 3 and he said rabbi verse 2 we know that thou art a man sent from god he says for no man can do these miracles except god be with him then jesus said verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and nicodemus said ah, how can this be can a man enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born then he said verse 5 i say unto you again except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god verse 6 that which is born of flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit now fast forward to verse 16 still speaking to nicodemus he said for god so loved the world john 3 16 that he gave his only begotten son now when you are quoting this scripture with intelligence you cannot say his only begotten son because jesus is no longer his only begotten son he is now the first begotten of we the brethren we are also sons of god now are we together yes so the bible says that whosoever watch this now this blessing is for whosoever yoruba Igbo, hausa american european whosoever believeth on him not on it believeth on him you need to believe in a person not just an information it takes more than an information the information is about a person but your faith must be on that person jesus christ whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved can i show you one more scripture romans chapter 10 let's go to verse 10 or romans chapter 10 8 to 10 it's important to make it clear what does it take for a man to be saved biblically but what saith it the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess. Please say confess. confess. One more time say confess. confess. Confess with thy mouth. So your mouth has a role to play in your being saved. You don't meditate salvation. Are we together? With thy mouth you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt believe with thy heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved verse 10 it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so God designed the system for administering salvation such that number one you will have to acknowledge you see the prodigal son came to himself and said how many hired servants has my father and i am here feeding with the swine he didn't have the power to change his status but he had the power to decide that one is given to any man god will not force salvation on you you cannot you don't have the power to translate yourself but you have the power to decide are we together the young boy got up and began to walk back home that one was within his power like when I make the altar call later on, is within your power to stand up or to leave your seat to come. That one God has given you the power. It's the power of your will. You can use your will and reject Jesus consciously and he will respect your decision. Hallelujah. So God desires that all men be saved. I say this because just because you have sincere people in church does not mean they are saved. It takes more than a, a nice heart and a wonderful, trouble-free individual. That does not equal salvation. There are many people who will not look for your trouble. They really are very sincere people. In fact, wonderful, but they are still going to hell. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, not we are the way. There are many ways, but there is only one. Jesus, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life no man he says come to the father except by me jesus also said i am the door what does that mean the authorized access into the kingdom if you claim you are in the kingdom and you followed another door that is not jesus number one you are in a wrong place because if you jump through the fence and you enter my house you are in my house but you are not welcome you are most likely a thief 
Am I right on that? The way into my house is not the fence. Mm -mm. The door is the authorized access. Jesus also said, I am the good shepherd. He says the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. You need to know all the things Jesus said he was and he is. As far as your salvation is concerned. So Paul was teaching his son Timothy and he says God desires that all men, that includes your spouse, all men, that includes your driver, all men, that includes your workers, all men, all men be saved. And then when salvation, the matter of new birth is sorted, we can now delve into other areas. So you see that salvation is very important, but as important as new birth is, please let me have your attention, as important as new birth is, it is not the ultimate of the believer's journey. It is only an initiation. It begins the process of walking in the kingdom. Are we together? The next assignment for any believer that gets saved it's not just to keep his Bible and come to church just ordinarily and go back and say, after all, I'm a Christian. There is need for efficiency. So the Bible says the second desire, that means when you are saved, you've satisfied one great desire in the heart of God for you. The second desire is that the same all men, that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. Because you see, this life you have received and this kingdom that we are part of, excelling in it is knowledge dependent please if you are writing write that down that excelling in the kingdom is knowledge dependent you can fail and fail so woefully that it does not there there does there will not seem to be anything in your life that is an advantage of eternal life because of ignorance your next assignment is to be on a pursuit a campaign to damage spiritual ignorance now this leads me to the discussion on darkness let's talk a bit about darkness the word darkness is a very interesting word the first mention of it is found in genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 genesis 1 verse 2 1 verse 1 says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth or the heaven and the earth verse 2 it says and the earth was without form watch this now and void and darkness this is the first mention of the word darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters verse 3 now says and god said let there be light and there was light so from scripture, we see that the first assignment as far as bringing beauty and glory to the earth is concerned was to do something about darkness. Watch this. Are we together now? Yes. For as long as there was darkness, nothing else could happen. The issue of man and creation and nature, it could not even be appreciated. When God came to the scene, the first thing he did was darkness, you need to go. And the moment darkness departed, then every other thing could come. And that was the first time we began to see the mention and it was good. And it was good because darkness was no longer there. And it was good. God made this in light and it was good. The word darkness in scripture connotes many, many meanings, but two essentially, number one, Darkness is always related to ignorance. Please write that down. Darkness, according to scripture, is always related to ignorance. The definition of darkness is the absence of light. Always related to ignorance. Number two, darkness is always connected to evil. So every time, you know, in most cases, except for a few exceptions, whenever you read about darkness in scripture, it talks about ignorance and then number two it talks about evil in its entirety in whatever form or fashion hallelujah and you know from scripture and even from science that in the presence of darkness there are many negative effects for instance darkness affects vision if the lights in this entire auditorium were put off 
you will not be able to see is that true yes with your eyes sound and correct you will still not be able to see or see properly so darkness affects vision number two darkness affects speed think of what happens to your headlamp in the night assuming you're on your way from any location in lagos to any location and then for whatever reason maybe a fuse or something goes bad and your headlamp does not work it doesn't matter whether you are driving a bentley a rolls royce a golf a bus it does not matter at that point the deciding factor as far as your speed is concerned is not the quality of the make of the vehicle the absence of light can limit you you will have to slow down and hope that you will arrive home safely and may god help you that it's not raining with thunder and all kinds of things are we together darkness affects speed that means when you dwell in the realm of darkness you will crawl your way through destiny and never be able to do anything that is of substance and of worth and this is the case with so many people they have the advantage of days but no accomplishments captured in their days calendar years keep coming and recycling again and again and there is nothing constructive at all but one of the most disturbing effects of darkness is that darkness alters identity in the presence of darkness you cannot really know who is who a light-skinned person may carry an interpretation like a dark person are we together a male can look like a female a, an old woman who deserves respect can look like a child you can mistaken a small child for an adult there is always confusion in the presence of darkness you cannot accord the honor that is due men in darkness that reminds me of the story of Jacob that should be Genesis 29 when you read from verse 22 it was in darkness that that exchange was that exchange happened having worked for Laban for his wife his wife based on his desire was Rachel but drama happened because there was darkness remember that story the man got up in the morning when light came and said what is this I really wonder what happened that you, you can imagine what darkness happened I mean darkness happened to that man and in his mind he thought that he was with Rachel only for him to wake up in the morning and say what have you done to me did I not serve you for Rachel he said you have beguiled me because of darkness darkness can misrepresent you you are a king and a priest but darkness can give you another identity that is far from what God has said you are Darkness can make you look weak. Darkness can make you look limited. It can alter your identity. No wonder the Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. How many great champions have been bound by darkness? Look at the madman in Gadara. That man was a great evangelist, but look what the kind of identity. Till today we do not know his name, except we research through history. Darkness was so much upon him, there was no mention of the name his mother gave him. Only God knows how many people would have been called, named after that great evangelist. But darkness simply called him the madman in Gadara. Is that a name? Was the man not healed? Why did his name change? If when we are talking about the man who saved many, we still call him the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. Darkness can create all kinds of names. The woman with the issue of blood. Huh? The crippled man at Bethesda. Darkness gives people names that their parents did not give them, that God did not give them. What of the name Ichabod? No mother would name a child like that. Only one mention of a, a woman who was angry at the situation of her child and named him Jabez. And the gentleman said, no, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. I can't carry this stigma. This is not me. 
I'm saying this because for someone here, you came for this conference, what you see in your dreams and visions is not what is appearing. In your dreams and visions and by prophecy, that they told you there were certain prophecies upon your life as you were born, but there is absolutely nothing like it today in your life. A prophecy of glory, a prophecy of grace, a prophecy of greatness, but what is happening in your life now is like that rejected stone. People use you to counsel others, to say if you must fail, don't even be like so, so, so and so. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who has carried that shame and that reproach in your life. I call upon my God that that reproach must leave your life permanently. Yeah. Hallelujah. There was a man in the Bible in John chapter 5. Are we still together? The Bible says that man was lying down close to a pool called Bethesda for 38 years. No friend, supposedly no family members. Didn't a woman give birth to him? This is what darkness can do to men. Left the man alone for 38 years. I'm sure people would pass and tell their children who were now adults. Remember when you were born, we passed and this man was here. And they say, ah, daddy, but this man is still there till now. And people just nod their head and pass. And one time, a stranger just walks up to him. And Jesus said, why are you in this condition? What can I do for you? And he said, I have no man. Darkness can take away good people from your life. Job, who was the wealthiest man in the East. Please listen carefully. The wealthiest man in the East. He had all kinds of people, herds and children. The moment his children died and everything left him, his relatives, his family members, everybody deserted him. The last and only person who was standing with him was his wife. There are some of you right now, when you call your son name, people are surprised while you are in that situation. Because there are so many people connected to you in the place of influence, but darkness has made people to reject you. And you've been isolated and left alone. Tonight you have come to know the truth. In the name of Jesus, the assignment of the truth is to make you free. Every time I read about the madman in Gadara, I feel so sad. The Bible says the man caught himself, lacerating himself day and night, bound by these wicked spirits. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I was in Port Harcourt, and I remember going, it was a company, I was to meet someone there, and true story, the woman, I think one of the women, she was dressed, you know, these security companies that were outsourced, and I remember just asking her to help me reach someone and let the person know that I have come, you know, as we're having an appointment with him. And I looked at the woman, she sounded so brilliant, and God is my witness. The woman told me that she was wrapping up her PhD. Yeah. Now, now, not to insult the job, but not for that status. This is what darkness can do. It can alter your identity. That when someone looks at you, he says, you were, when you were 20 years, you were full of life. I thought by now you would have done great things for the kingdom. What reduced you to look like yesterday? This is the case with many people. Darkness can truly alter your identity. That the glory and the grace that should emanate from your life is no longer seen. And people look at you and it's like you are a testament of woes and reproach. So when Jesus, when God said, let there be light, that is a real miracle. Let there be light means let your tears come to an end let there be light listen let there be light means that the reign of darkness over your life misrepresenting you whose house are you going to this woman don't go there if you want to make it don't go near that house there is a spirit in that house that anybody that enters there goes down and people begin to avoid you there are many of you you are carrying you know, pastor said something in joking in passing that there were two kinds of boats in the Bible and there were two men that entered that boat. Somebody entered the boat. He didn't insult anybody. He didn't look for trouble. He just carried a spirit into the boat and people started going down. 
they lost their properties they lost everything another person was in the boat and he was both of them were sleeping hallelujah darkness darkness represents evil in its entirety i have seen families with graduates for many years that none of them can earn up to 10 20 000 in a month and you will see a woman who labored and gave birth to children handsome gentlemen beautiful ladies and yet no door opens darkness is dangerous listen as we begin to pray tonight make sure you don't keep quiet get angry and say this thing has to leave my life this reproach that has come upon my life that is called darkness the woman with the issue of blood is that a name the madman in gadara is that a name no every child is named at birth what happened to these people that their problems replace their names that's what darkness can do it can carry your problem and replace your name a name that means beauty and color yet people will forget your identity and tie you to something that family where nobody rises that family where all the ladies is like they're a cause they come into the life of any man he goes down that family where the gentlemen and the women and the, no no you have to insist that light will come to change that identity for as long as it was darkness listen jacob did not know which was leah or rachel but when it was morning the arrival of light he could see clearly hallelujah when you tolerate darkness in your life you will live a defeated christian life i told you that darkness in scripture essentially represents ignorance and evil that means the assignment of light is to deal with these two things to deal with evil but to deal with ignorance most believers only focus on the evil part the evil spirits but they do not focus on the fact that darkness is also ignorance you can cast a spirit in one moment you don't cast ignorance in one moment are we together with one declaration in the name of jesus an evil spirit that has tormented individuals can go but it is a process to drive darkness as ignorance and many believers do not have the discipline to stay and get the truth that brings them liberty indeed. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth that you know and you engage by faith is what will set you free. That the truth can make men free. Are we together? Are we learning now? How do you know the presence of darkness in your life? By searching around for every aspect in your life that is inconsistent with what the word of God said should be. It tells you that there might be darkness roaming around them. Any aspect of your life that is inconsistent with the written word, inconsistent with the spoken word, must be an area of immediate project because it only tells you that darkness is roaming around them this is a call to take responsibility listen carefully when you tolerate darkness you permit it to grow i hope you know darkness can grow yes sir the bible says for darkness shall cover the earth that is a level then when it grows it becomes gross darkness the people it first comes as darkness but when you permit it to complacency and giving of excuses it now begins to grow until it is called gross darkness so isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you he says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee Amen. hallelujah Amen. praise the name of the lord so i want you to settle it for a fact before we begin to deal with all the aspects of the kingdom that the bible calls light 
it's important for you to know that the limiting factor in the life of many people is either number one they are not saved or number two if and when they are saved then there is the reign of darkness in their lives darkness as the manifestation of satanic forces evil spirits wicked spirits or darkness as ignorance most likely both when you want to deal with darkness it takes more than administering deliverance you can cast the spirit but if your mind is not transformed are we together now you are still in darkness spirits are not the only tests of darkness ignorance is also darkness even if, when there is no spirit there and when there is ignorance there the spirits can still return because darkness will invite them your ignorance will give them the access to come back again if you're understanding what i'm teaching you say amen, amen. so apostle where do i start from that you are unsaved you need jesus in a hurry when that decision is made then the next decision is to be ready and to be willing to embrace the ministry of the holy spirit to embrace the word of god and then to begin a radical journey of enlightenment enlightenment ephesians chapter 1 please from verse 16 i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers he says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you help me the spirit of wisdom in the revelation and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 now and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power where do i start from the determination to eradicate darkness in all forms and fashion and it starts number one by commanding by the blood of jesus and by the name that these spirit influences that have come to represent doom and darkness in and around your life and that one you will experience it in this conference but then the responsibility of launching a merciless campaign against darkness darkness dwelling as ignorance the bible says in hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened you see there ephesians 4 18 being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts there are many miracles in the bible that the, the bible will record that there were places jesus did not heal them did not heal or he healed some there were places the bible say he healed all but i have studied my bible and there was no blind man in scripture who met jesus and went without healing jesus took the subject of blindness personal to a point that he prayed for one person twice jesus will hardly pray for one person twice if he met you once that was it but he was insistent on seeing that a man's blindness left him he prayed for him and said how is the situation now he said i see but it's not clear i see he said no i will not tolerate that little darkness left i will still pray again i see men like trees he said no men are not trees they can be like trees but they are not trees he prayed for him again jesus had zero tolerance for darkness are we together light why are things not working in my life i love the lord with all my heart 
but what is the key to an excelling life what is the key to dominion what is the key to a life of grace what is the key to longevity what is the key to breaking free from these yokes of darkness it's not my fault that i was born from the family i was born from must i suffer the limitations because i was born there there has to be a way to liberty ladies and gentlemen please hear me just because you have dwelt around darkness for a long time does not mean that light cannot set you free let me give you an example that many of you who listen to my teachings have given these examples time and again imagine with me a room that has been dark for six years you have that in your mind dark for six years no one has put the bulb on imagine another room that has been dark since last year no one entered that room two rooms now imagine a room that has been dark since last week no one tried to put the light on imagine a room that has been dark since this morning so we have four rooms now many years six years one year ago one week ago a few hours ago now assuming there is a central command that switches on the bulbs when you switch on the bulb and it's supposed to affect all four rooms which of the rooms will be lit first help me that means no matter how long the room has been dark if it is authentic light that comes the timing the longevity of the darkness does not matter if that room is not lit something is wrong i just dramatized john 1 5 for you for the bible says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there has never been a time when light and darkness sat down to discuss and negotiate. The presence of true light is the immediate exit of darkness. Do you believe this? When I found this key, I became a student of light. I said I would take responsibility for my life and no matter how long it would take i will be a student of scripture until i eradicate darkness darkness that can tie a glorious and a beautiful life and render you to be helpless and look hopeless you need to take responsibility apostle are you aware of the kind of darkness and witchcraft and wickedness in my family i assure you it is because true light has not come there when true light comes you will see the power that raised christ from the dead over principalities and witches listen you know when people talk about of course i understand that people are in pain and sometimes they say apostle i know that you've been doing this thing but you don't know the kind of problem in my family and i say you think so do you know the kind of problem that was in my own family everybody met problem there are no there are no empty mountains there are always giants on every mountain so because you met your own giant and we've killed our own don't make a mistake and think when you see a clean mountain warfare happened there well there were giants that were subdued there are no empty mountains anywhere every family had devils somewhere if you find them silent they were made to be quiet it says now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together because sometimes we don't contend for light that brings victory because we like to attract sympathy and say my case is a special case I submit to you by the authority of scripture that there have been nobody's case was worse than Job's case in the Bible at least not in modern history that I know that in one day look at the tragedy that came to a, a man's life your children your estate your business in one day he was the headline everywhere job some will say that that power you went to collect now it has finally caught up with you and then as if that was not enough then boils began to come out imagine you were married to such a man people will look at you and advise you you are still here this guy is already dead don't blame her for saying curse god and die would she spend the rest of her life there and job said no problem you can say all you want to say but all the days of my appointed time i will wait but i love i love job chapter 42 and verse 10 it says and god restored 
This is the God we are talking about. God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. That for someone by December when you come here for service, your testimony will be your tears of joy. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Do you believe this? God is able to turn the lives of men around. Don't get too used to darkness. It's been there for 20 years, but let light come and you see what will happen. And you see the, the, the product of light. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. When it comes, it can do a quick work. I know that you should have had a job for 10, 20 years, but in one day, God can give you a job that is equivalent to 10 people's job. You see, the thing with God is that light comes in its various dimensions. It can come as restoration. It can come as healing. It can come as breakthrough. It can come as favor. It can come as speed. It is still light. I just named the many things that will start happening to you from tonight. For someone is speed, for someone is restoration. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Praise the name of the Lord. But the responsibility of crying and praying for light is your personal responsibility. Are we together now? yes you have to be angry with your current position you have to be angry with the fact that your life has been ineffective as far as bringing glory to god and insist to take responsibility that every area that looks like darkness in my life list it down take responsibility this is beyond just hearing a sermon this finance this wicked evil satanic dreams this disfavor upon my life that someone vows to bless me and then I go to his office and it's as if something came upon him to forget. What is the secret of favor? What is the secret of speed? What is the secret of restoration? How do I have five children and not one of them is risen and strong and able to bless me? Yet Psalm 112 said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. You take that responsibility. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free John 17 17 sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so the truth that translates as light and liberates the saints please hear me I'm trying to be as simple as possible because I want everybody to understand the truth that the Bible calls light is the Word of God but when you hear the word of God, the word of God means many things. Number one, the word of God is truth as revealed from scripture. The word of God also represents the speakings of God to you. Are we together now? Yes. So both the spoken word and the written word are profitable to give us stature, to bring us liberty and to help us to command triumph and dominion in experience light for instance deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 light is coming now and it shall come to pass if thou joshua selman shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the lord to do and to observe all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord thy god will set you on high Listen to me. The first time I read this scripture, I was in one room and I believed it. I believed it. I believed it. I believed it. With all my heart, that if a man believes the word of the Lord and finds the secret that lifts men, you can be lifted above all the nations of the earth. 
and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you let's list the blessings i hope you are learning please give it to us blessed shall thou be in lagos is that not the name of your city so why is everything rejecting you in lagos why why is everybody running away from you why you may be a man of god but why is everything you are sincere you are working with integrity loving the lord but it looks like nothing is working blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field next verse blessed shall be the fruit of your body please mother say amen, amen. that means no woman is permitted to suffer and give birth to an robber or to give birth to a prostitute or a troublemaker that is plaguing society the bible says the fruit of your body is blessed Amen. blessed is the fruit of your ground Amen. regardless the economic situation this is what light says listen you don't you don't agree when you see it you agree with god in believing and engage his word to see things change verse 5 blessed shall be thy basket and thy store yeah. verse 6 now blessed shall thou be when thou comest in yeah. and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out yeah. i wish i had time we can spend a whole day on this scripture there are people who are only blessed when they go out they are not blessed when they come in there are people who are only blessed when they are in. They are never blessed when they go out. The Bible says a man who is truly blessed must be blessed when he comes in and blessed when he goes out. Whether you are in Lagos, you are in US, you are in Canada, you are in America, you are in your village. For, for, for as long as you are the one moving, the Bible says that blessing must follow you. And we saw that in the life of Abraham. When Lot left and went to settle near Sodom, the Lord told him, From where thou art, lift up your eyes, northward, eastward, that everywhere your soul, you know, your eyes see, it shall be given. It's not like a vision that, I, I mean, what kind of thing? How can I be preaching in the name of the Lord? And then I'm done preaching, they obey me in church and oppress me in my room. What sort of authority is this? I knew that my authority was not, it was not yet established, and I had to go. And, and fish out scriptures like arrows there has to be a way behold i give you authority power over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy are we together that we have been exalted with christ far above principalities powers every name thrones dominions yes sir i put these things together and I meditated upon them I believed it I remember very clearly that night when the light entered my spirit I didn't pray and ask the spirits to go I pleaded with them I said show up again till till tomorrow they have not come let me tell you ladies and gentlemen I don't mean to brag but darkness only looks bold when it meets ignorance there is a level of light illumination that shines upon your heart you will see how cheap satan is hallelujah oh nobody rises in lagos if you don't know this man and this man you will not rise that is what darkness is as bold as your ignorance makes it look if you go for knowledge you can rewrite the things that people say the things i'm telling you by the grace of god i've proven it with my own life so i'm not just here to waste your time and give you cunningly devised fables this is true are we together when light comes it brings with it confidence you know that god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent the bible says gentiles shall come to my light when i read it i believed it so i kept looking out for gentiles until they came and the bible says it's not only gentiles even their kings will come and I said, let me prepare because their kings are coming. This is what I, listen, your spiritual reality is dependent on the light, the truth that comes to you, that you know, you understand, and you believe. My assignment tonight is just to show you we are diagnosing the problem. 
by tomorrow i'll begin to show you the various light components that help a believer to stand victorious are we together the assignment tonight is to just show us what is wrong you know how a doctor that every aspect of my life that is yet to represent the glory of God is only so because darkness is still somewhere looming around my life if I can bring you to a point where you accept that responsibility tonight you are ready for victory apostle but I'm a hard-working person this finance I've done my best the only thing I've not done is to steal the money does not want to come to me this is what I'm saying are we together now there are parents who will not even give their own children money and yet they will package it and come and say man of God I've been looking for you I just want to bless you and you are wondering is this fair but you see our realities are defined by the lights that we command hallelujah I know a whole family true story a whole family that mysteriously just had HIV yes whole family and it started by someone having a dream where someone came with a syringe and said this one is blood infected and injected the person in the dream and the person woke up physically and then symptoms started they went to the hospital and they said you've, you've had this for a long time you did not know how did it come how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about everything my father has not planted in the name of Jesus Christ whether it's in your blood and your body I decree and declare it must go down this night These are the keys that control dominion in experience. It's one thing to talk dominion. It's another thing to walk the reality of it. The dominion power of God has equal value in any nation because the same Lord is rich unto all. There is something that when you find a body of truth that when you find ladies and gentlemen you will command the anointing in a way that will surprise you there is a body of truth that when you find a generation must listen to you there is a body of truth that when you find you will become such a blessing to people there is a body of truth that when you find you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delightsome land. There is a body of truth that when you find, you can know that no nation can reject you. It does not matter their sentiments. There is a body of truth that if you find, you will command wealth and abundance in a way that people would think you went to a herbalist or you caught a human head. Do you believe this? You are gathered tonight because God is determined determined to see to it that this the products of light speak in your life but be angry with darkness right where you are seated 
whether outside or inside and those following online i want you to imagine for one minute the various areas of darkness in your life that have refused to go and take responsibility i have left it that is why the reason why a job has not come is because i have been going around dropping my cv but i have not dropped my cv on the word i am yet to find the component the bible says that one time the the owner of the vineyard was inviting men to come to the vineyard and he found some people idle and he said why sittest thou idle they say no man employ us immediately he called them and they were they were brought in see the kingdom only works from the lens of the light you have hallelujah do you believe that apostle i'm a good person but people don't like me nobody is liked by default the world is too wicked for people to just like you by default there is a grace the light of god's favor that comes upon the face of a man that will compel people to like you from nation to nation but there is a body of truth that controls that do you understand my teaching tonight that darkness is responsible for most of the chaos in our lives and that this darkness is twofold one spiritual forces that militate against the purposes of god in your life and then number two darkness manifesting as ignorance bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge bankruptcy of understanding is called darkness among the many disasters of darkness the worst is that it gives you a false identity this is not me this life is not me no this reproach does not belong to me i'm carrying another man's destiny where is my destiny that destiny that represents beauty and color and grace and power if you're with me say amen, amen. you must get angry at darkness and make up your mind you're a man of God here you must make up your mind by the spirit that ministry must work for me the Bible says to give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting the call of God upon your life and you do that by studying to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth hallelujah you are in business and things are not working it's time for you to find out from the word of God this is darkness every time you see what does not make manifest what brings fear what keeps spirits at work in your life everything that is sponsored by ignorance is called darkness and you must get angry in the name of jesus and take responsibility why am i not able to feed and take care of my family the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel i am not an infidel you say what is this joblessness this embarrassment there has to be a way out i will be on a journey searching for light and that light shines through darkness and in a moment you drive away darkness only to give road to glory and grace and power so jesus looks at the man at bethesda and says stand up pick up your bed walk away and that was the end of it that is the light of the world hallelujah you see the beautiful thing about light is that true light does not fade the sun has been shining before any of us arrived here and it has never needed assistance your phone because it was artificially made you need to recharge it no matter how bright it shines some of us your phone is on four percent now three percent one is almost some is even off you have it can come back but not for now but the sun when it is dark in Nigeria, as far as the sun is concerned, there has never been darkness in its economy. Darkness is simply a product of geography. If you ask the sun, where is darkness? You say, I don't know. From the day I was established, I have never seen it. 
it is simply the rotation of the earth that is responsible for that theory we have today as far as the sun is concerned it does not rise it does not go down darkness it does not share dominion with darkness if you go and ask the sun to lecture you the sun will say from the time the earth was created there has only been light and you say but you are lying you say well based on where you live but as far as i am concerned as the sun are we together now how do you tell the sun that there was once darkness you say i i i, I respect you but you are lying based on my reality you are lying there has never been darkness kai this is powerful my goodness so if your life becomes like that sun even if you are in egypt there will be light in goshen whereas there's darkness everywhere and people will ask you and say how is this happening to you that we know that things they are downsizing and this is happening but it looks like you have used the word of god to create another kind of reality now you understand what it means by let your light so shine before men if god is asking your light to shine light does not shine in light it shines in darkness are we together now there was a parable of the lost coin there's no time to touch on that we'll deal with that tomorrow and the bible says somebody who had a valuable treasure coin coin can help you to buy things and it was lost it was in the room but he could not find it and for as long as he could not find it there was nothing he could do the bible says the first approach to that restoration was the man lit his candle then number two he took a broom and he started sweeping in the presence of light until he found it and he called everybody and said come and rejoice with me light has helped me to find something that is mine is in the room but not in my hands light can help you find your job that is in lagos but not yet in your hand light can help you find your health that is around but not yet in your life everything that should be in your life is already within your domain it takes light to fish your portion and bring it to you hallelujah till today and till forever i remain a student of scripture do you know why because i'm on a project to not spare anything that looks like darkness in my life i consistently upgrade you see you can have light and yet your light is not bright enough so you continue learning you continue growing you continue building you don't say i have a little light your phone has light but it's not enough to light this place so if you depend on your phone lighting you will never know the beauty of this auditorium it takes light high level light placed at various positions if you have light in only one area of your life that will be the only area you will be able to see you see that the lights here are placed across several places and that's why they're giving us light we can see everywhere the beauty of this auditorium ladies and gentlemen you are going to cry unto god and say this area of darkness that has dwelt in my life that has dwelt in my finances my marriage my health in the name of jesus the son of the living god i will still show you one more scripture to wrap up but whilst you are seated i'd like you to pray father i am ready to deal with darkness i am ready in the name of jesus every spirit that represents darkness in my life and my destiny now is the time and now is the moment you must leave and i like you to pray every ignorance bankruptcy of truth that was the true light that lighted every man go ahead and pray Someone pray.
Yes, sir. The Lord is hearing you. Man of God, the Lord is hearing you. Hearing your cry. Darkness in ministry. Darkness in your health. Darkness in your finances. It's time for it to go. In the name of Jesus. That the grace and the glory of the Lord that has been ordained to radiate from your life, it must show up. I have allowed the reign of darkness for far too long. I now take responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him. Listen, let me tell you this. Years ago, I remember one day I was meditating on this scripture, and I'm saying this to the glory of God. And I remember in that vision, while I was meditating, it, it was a dream, I would say, and I slept and I saw myself standing before presidents of nations and shaking hands and they were greeting. And when I came back, I said, wow. And then I read this scripture again. And the Lord told me that if you will get light, this will be your destiny, that you will stand before the great. Looking back today, I'm almost in tears because God does not lie. You see, God does not lie that the people you think are great will look at you and call you great because light elevated you to an enviable position where you become an inspiration to generations there are many things I do not believe because they are products of ignorance for instance that you cannot rise from where you are and then the world celebrate the grace of God upon your life please don't believe that Are we together? Let's finish that scripture. First Peter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness. What did he call you into? What did he call you into? So when he calls men out of darkness, what makes you spectacular is not just the size of your body, not your voice, not necessarily your looks. It is that you are surrounded by marvelous light. So much light that darkness cannot come again. You don't tell darkness go, you tell light come. When light comes, darkness goes. Is that true? So many of us have dwelt in darkness for far too long. And the Lord is challenging you right now. Get angry. Identify the areas of darkness and insist that in this conference, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it must give way. There are many things as I wrap up that qualify to be called darkness. Let me list some of them for you in case you have forgotten. Are you ready? Number one, disfavor is darkness delay is darkness retrogression is darkness plagues of sicknesses and infirmity darkness oppressions of 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 witchcraft and all kinds of things darkness stagnation limitation it's called darkness the inability to make constructive progress in your life darkness financial limitations darkness are we together threats that you go to bed and you cannot sleep in peace you wake up more tired than you were when you slept because of evil and wicked dreams the bible says he giveth his beloved sleep 
but there are people the moment they close their eyes they begin another battle they get up tired what kind of oppression is that darkness how about the uh, is some kind of demonic cloud covering your giftings listen let me tell you i have met gifted people in my life there are gifted people in this city. There are gifted people even within this place. I have met gifted people in ministry, gifted people in business, so much so that you wonder, why are you at this level with this kind of gift? That some of the people you are celebrating are not half as gifted as you, but there are spirits that just sit on the glory of men and not allow them rise. Gifted but limited. This conference is an opportunity that God has put together so that that veil be lifted from your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you we do not even know who you are because you are standing from a position of darkness and we cannot know whether you are the one God sent for us to bless and lift because we cannot see you I told you that darkness it, it creates an aberrated identity you don't know who is who you might be looking for someone and stand near the person but because it is in darkness you cannot even know light is powerful the bible says that which makes manifest is light hallelujah praise the name of the lord when jesus was born there was a star in the sky is that in your bible that star was so bright the Magi looked at it and said, no, this is not just that the, the, the atmosphere is bright. There has to be something. And they followed that light until they got to where Jesus was. That means there is a light that should compel men from wherever they are to say, what is making, there is an illumination in this church. There is an il illumination in this family that they should come to right where you are. And Jesus as a baby, he had not prayed, he had not fasted, there was just light over him and gifts were already coming to him. Before he made mention of any first prayer, before he made mention of any first fasting, before he even understood those who would walk with him. As a baby, simply because there was a light upon him, the Magi came and they brought to him gifts of gold, of frankincense, and of myrrh. How do adults worship a baby and drop gifts as a baby? He could not even say thank you. That is the power of light. That when light is upon you, you will marvel and wonder at the things that men will do. They will leave any distance to any distance and say, are you the James they've been talking about? The Lord sent me to come and do this for you. And you will stand in awe and say, God, is this how you really move? And God says, that is what happens when you embrace light. Fight darkness. Reject darkness. Be on a campaign against darkness. Darkness especially as ignorance make up your mind that i will not be a believer that is just saved and yet wallowing in ignorance full of supposed wise sayings that do not carry any spiritual power for instance one day go better that is not an accurate scriptural statement it's just a sociological comfort for instance life is turn by turn my turn is coming see those statements you nobody's turn is coming anywhere you force the time to arrive at your i didn't get my point now yes there is a law of time and chance where potentials come towards you but if it must be your turn it happens by taking a dim the bible says right from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force no destiny helper will come by default to help you it will take you programming your heavens for that to happen this is true hallelujah so tonight i have the assignment of challenging you 
to shake you off to say no there is more to your life than this you've been given all kinds of excuses leave those excuses this night you're a man of god you are you are a worship minister and nobody has discerned your grace in lagos it's a different thing if you are in your season of training if the season of training is over just know that it is darkness keeping you down and you get up and say lord i will press in light one song that will come from your spirit will make the nations to place a demand let me tell you it's not difficult to rise when light is the one that is lifting you if you try to lift yourself you will be wasting your time hallelujah i met a gentleman a few weeks ago where i was in lagos ministering at a church and i met this gentleman very fine brilliant young man and i think he's responsible for one of these inventions um, you know are across the, the transport sector and he was speaking to me and i said ah this guy is smart this guy is very very smart and when he was telling me some of the things that he was doing with the governments of a few nations and all of that i told him i said this is wonderful but i want to pray for you there is a grace called visibility you see if you do not have the grace for visibility you can be as gifted as anything and you will remain there like many people whose tables are full of the solutions to national and transcontinental problems that if these men were called whether in government or in certain corporations the world will experience their wisdom and be grateful for it yet those people will remain there those projects will rot on the table because visibility has not been given to men i don't know who i'm speaking to but in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare again whoever needs to see you whoever needs to discern the workings of god in your hand and to lift you may god position them to see you may god position them to see you hallelujah but now hear me please and this one i will begin this night one of the worst forms of darkness the worst manifestation of darkness that i know of is sickness and infirmity please listen i've been sick before i know what it means for your body or any aspect of your body to deteriorate and to be in pain if you've never been sick before you will not ex you will not appreciate the power the healing power of jesus christ darkness you see everybody is given the privilege of having one body per lifetime are we together yes nobody as much as we know science has not perfected the art of transferring a soul into another body we've not seen that happen yet so you are given only one body per lifetime please let me have your attention whatever happens to that body it literally sustains the ability to end your life whether your time is there or not and how many of you know that the only authorization you have to remain upon the earth is that not that you have a body that your body is healthy enough to keep your spirit in it are we together there is a health a threshold health requirement that if your body goes below your spirit will have to leave whether it is your time or not are we together now that means anything that tries to disturb the health of your body is attempting to administer death to your life and you should not tolerate it are we together now this is very important we have all kinds of sicknesses that disturb people and and rob them of the liberty to enjoy beauty and color the man called hezekiah great king and yet this man was about to die and the prophet came and said put your house in order you are going to die and he said no no god you whatever it is that you do cannot allow the dominion of darkness no wonder the bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. there is a spirit that is wasting the lives of people across you see vibrant strong people my head my head and the next thing they say the person has gone now, I am not getting you emotional if you've lost a loved one that's fine but I I came here to on an assignment and one of it is that this plague of sickness 
infirmity and death these are spirits and like any other form of darkness they can be kept at bay are we together now this is true you have to believe it so i used to have these demon spirits come to press me years ago literally like you're pressing someone to die and i'm wondering what did i do until i found out there are people who had that experience and never woke up again they just said the person went to bed and died it's, it's only if you have an opportunity to go to heaven that the person will say, I did not die, I was killed. These wicked spirits from the realm of the spirit. No devil will take your life before your time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know of a young man who graduated, very fine young man, true story. He came to collect his certificate and was on a bike and a car just came out. I don't know whether the man was all right or not. And just cleared. He died instantly. The only son of his mother. Hallelujah. If you are here and you have that kind of story in your family. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to believe that that satanic plague must leave you. <laughs> that the last death that occurred around your family is the last. Don't say it always happens. No. By light, I end this demonic, satanic manifestation. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know how many times people have seen me dead? I refuse to die. Oh, that's why I'm alive. Sometimes I want to take a trip. And sincere people, anointed people, will say, Apostle, please don't go. We've seen a ghastly motor accident. But I have to go and minister. These people are, are waiting. What do I tell them? I can't come for your conference because they said I would die. What am I coming to preach then? How, who am I coming to help? I'm sure some of you are saying, Apostle, don't speak like this. So speak like that. That is exactly the fear I want to drive out of your life. It says, and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The righteous are as bold as a lion but your boldness is not based on nothing your boldness is based on light that you can stand with light and stand in peace and know that in the name of jesus the word of god will work for me there's nothing the devil can do about a man who has found light his assignment is to stop sufficient light from getting to you but once that light has arrived you will arise and then you will shine it's in your bible it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light you see if you refuse light and i accept light your refusing light does not affect me are we together now when it has to do with the ministry of light it is personal i can only encourage you but surrounding yourself with the light that gives you victory is entirely your responsibility hallelujah so tonight within the few minutes that we have i want to speak i'm going to speak over your life and then would have for every of the sessions who would do this this plague of sickness and death and death we're about to enter what we call the ember months it has even become a it's almost like an unwritten season so once they say ember months people begin to shake and say so this is it who is going to go now must somebody die because it's the ember month i hope you are not angry that i'm challenging you i came to provoke you in your spirit to say this year i will not lose any of my loved ones that in the name of jesus christ you can you must insist that by the power of the holy ghost and while you are saying it the devil will be telling you but they diagnose something they, every tree that has not been planted by my father that is the confidence of the believer Oh, every tree that has not been planted I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord man of God you will not die that devil lying to you that you will preach and then die on stage no sir with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation hallelujah hallelujah 
Now we are going to pray. I just sense strong in my spirit. I will speak over your life, but I want us to pray. I don't know why God is putting it in my heart to rebuke the spirit of death. In one minute or, the, or two minutes, you're going to mention both your name and everybody God has brought around you and declare the covering of the blood that you will not hear bad news. No death. Please, someone pray. Be serious. Outside, those following online, lift your voice and pray. The Bible says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. I shall not leave. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Someone pray. Pray. The sound of death, the sound of mourning will not be heard. In my house, nor my habitation. Someone with faith, pray. Mention the name of your children. Hallelujah. Please look at me. In Jesus' name. We're still praying. It's not only men that can die. Things can die. Like a business can die. Like influence can die. Like reputation can die. So when I say prophesy life, it's not only life in terms of your existence you will speak to anything that can have life whether it is your business whether it is your influence it will not die open your mouth and pray death will not be around my habitation in the name of jesus the son of the living god death will not be around my habitation whatever god does is forever Yes, sir. Go ahead and pray. The works of your hands will not die. The influence God has given you, he says, I will bless you and I will make your name great. A man's name can die. Your relevance can fade away. But I'd like you to refuse. Pray in the name of Jesus. Preserve those appointed unto death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King. We are going to pray. You know the areas of darkness in your life. Please look at me. Look at me. I don't want you to keep quiet and I don't want you to be ashamed and embarrassed. Every area where you have not seen result, genuine, consistent result, mention it by name and say in this conference, the, the darkness that sponsors the reign of that pain or that evil must give way. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. My life must bring glory to Jesus. My life must bring glory to Jesus. Contend in the name of Jesus. If it's your finances, mention it. You may not know what dimension of light but identify the darkness there you must change 
sickness up and down oppression up and down retrogression up and down no joy today replaced by sorrow someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying pray from the depth of your heart it's a word and prayer conference make sure you are praying darkness your time is up financial darkness marital darkness darkness in the area of fruitfulness darkness in the area of career darkness in the area of ministry someone who is angry in your spirit go ahead and pray it must give way the plague of divorce in this family the plague of poverty and failure and sickness untimely death unfruitfulness in ministry bankruptcy of influence and visibility you must give way in the name of Jesus disappointed expectations take a minute to pray 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 of the balcony are you praying the overflows outside make sure you are praying the lord sees your heart you are praying flesh may be weak but the spirit is willing God has spoken great things concerning you do not be silent pray go ahead and pray pray and I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will always worship you and I hallelujah say after me father please shout it say father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every manifestation of darkness in my life it gives way now open your mouth and pray gives way now gives way now are there people of prayer here it gives way now mothers pray fathers pray the reign of darkness and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free
in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray please don't be tired something is happening in the spirit Genesis 1 5 Genesis 1 5 please help us media Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5 the Bible says let me just read for sake of time God called the light day and the darkness he called night so light has a name another name for light is day and another name for darkness is night and the Bible says weeping endures for as long as it is night once you are in darkness crying does not come to an end it says but joy comes with the morning that means it is not the chronological passage of time that causes day and night it is the presence or the absence of light it is night now geographically speaking but it can become day when you have light hallelujah there are many of us whether it is 12 noon whether it's 6 a.m in the morning 6 p.m in the night 12 midnight spiritually you are perpetually in the night because it is darkness that is the reason why you cry in the morning you cry in the afternoon because weeping is connected to night hallelujah the bible says but joy comes with the morning and morning is not 6 a.m morning is any time your light comes therefore you are going to pray that in the name of Jesus my heart is open to receive light that is your next prayer point please open your mouth and pray my heart is open to receive light understanding spiritual illumination ah someone is praying Lord the light component it takes to arise and to shine to reveal your glory to my world that my life commands the excellency of the kingdom I obtain that grace my heart is open my heart is open light that damages ignorance open my heart is open I see this conference as a spiritual investment that finally I have a chance to put together the truth the light that will liberate me indeed hallelujah hallelujah Jesus said and ye shall know the truth he never said being around the truth sets you free he never even said having access to the truth sets you free ye shall know the truth ye shall know the truth ye shall know the truth from tomorrow we are going to be exploring the truth the light component that is responsible for the various aspects of our Christian life that at the end of these sessions you will stand you can wave yesterday goodbye and know that it is gone for good and forever in the name of Jesus but for someone here who came with any kind of satanic medical report just place your hand I want to pray just to speak over your life and then I will also rebuke the spirit of death. This thing is not leaving me. I will still pray it. When God is insisting on something like this, it's because he wants to avert tears from a family. This is why he has said, if this is the only reason it is worth it, you're trusting God for a miracle, just place your hand on your chest. Father, there are several people who have come inside and outside, many following online. They have come to access the truth and to know it the truth that liberates 
the truth that sets free right now i am praying first and foremost if there is anyone under the sound of my voice you have been seeing dead people in your dreams you go to bed and what you are uh, interacting with dead people things that have to do with the grave i decree and declare whatever from the grave is calling you and saying you must come and join us i sever that relationship now for the bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness i'm saying it again if there is anyone who is being called into untimely death by dreams prophetic experiences ill speakings of men activities of witchcraft i decree and i declare right now this moment here at new heritage baptist church in the name of jesus the son of the living god let the spirit of death live your life forever and if you have seen any one of your loved ones whether in dreams or visions dying we cancel it right now anyone here suffering any kind of blood disease i'm seeing a thermometer rising and falling high blood pressure in the name of jesus christ i command that bp to go down eye conditions be healed now any organ failure in your body for some of you the organ may be so failed that you may need a replacement may god who is the greatest physician in the name of jesus let him bring you a replacement now be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name one of the truths in the kingdom is the power of the prophetic when it is administered within the boundary of scripture the prophetic can work wonders i want to speak over someone that in the name of jesus for many of you before you get home i say this as one sent by god in the name of jesus something that has not happened in your life from january till now may it happen this night May it happen this night a call you have not received may you receive it this night in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah and for someone here any long-standing issue in your life it has refused to give way maybe health maybe your job problems in your office maybe your spiritual life in the name of jesus christ tonight as dagon fell before the ark let that problem fall before the feet of jesus hallelujah for someone you will wake up tomorrow with a text with an email demanding for you from people who have rejected you and I mean what I'm saying hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the kind of favor you have not seen from January till now in the name of Jesus my God the one who helps men I decree and declare between tonight and this week finishing may that favor testimony rest upon your life hallelujah hallelujah and for someone here one of the blessings that you are receiving tonight is not just material money or favor what you are receiving tonight is a restoration of your spiritual fire 
a restoration of your spiritual fire because the truth is that God began to walk in your life because of a glorious prophetic destiny but somewhere along the line either through carelessness or through discouragement you just stop your walk with God and and it's like you you dismiss yourself from the school of the spirit God is calling you to return back in the name of Jesus when I began my discussion we shared the scripture that said God desires number one that all men be saved and then that they come to the knowledge of the truth I was so humbled and touched when I saw several people outside with their hearts hungry and open and several others up the balcony and around here I know that every time God allows for a people to come this way it is because he adds daily as many as should be saved the business of being saved is not just about Christianity I have taught you without that admission into the kingdom you are perpetually a victim of Satan darkness in its entirety the authorized escape route from darkness and the authorized admission into the kingdom is Jesus it is only through the living Christ that we have access to this life and this grace wherein we stand I want to give an opportunity right now for two groups of people in one please let me have your attention you are here and you are saying apostle I need Jesus I came for this conference but whilst you were speaking the Holy Ghost began to talk to me that I need to make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle I once made this decision but sincerely I cannot say in truth that right now my life is intact with God I want to give you an opportunity very quickly the hall is full so I'm not going to ask you to come out but what I will ask you to do very boldly if we can let's try it and see if it works for those up the balcony who are making this decision I would just want you to move forward and come just in front there and then those in here let's try to see if we can just squeeze one or two people at the aisles because I need to see the people those outside you will do the same um, at least just move forward let someone an official outside just guide them on where to stand after I lead you to pray you'll be directed on what else to do I want to count one to five someone who is bold and not ashamed come and stand God bless you let's appreciate them I need no other argument, I need no other plea, it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Two, come. I need no other argument, I need no other plea, it is enough that Jesus died. seen an auditorium I hope there are people from that 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 hall who are coming to the front if there are people celebrate them as they come to the front God bless you the hall on the screen and every other place God bless you God bless you God bless you hallelujah four and finally five I want to salute everyone who has come if you are still coming please move forward I want to see you because I want us to pray together Listen to me, beloved people of God. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It is the noblest thing to do in this side of God's kingdom to make this decision to accept the Lordship of Jesus as Savior and Lord and Christ. This is officially your admission into the kingdom, into a life of victory, into the kingdom of light, even his dear son. So I'm going to lead you, young and old, you have come declaring your faith in Jesus as I lead you through this simple prayer I want you to repeat after me um, those outside I'm sure you can see and hear me and for someone who is watching online perhaps you are watching by way of television following from the internet or perhaps watching a rebroadcast and the Lord is saying to come make this decision 
hallelujah i know that you are being given cards now but let me plead that you suspend filling the cards for a moment and then i'll lead you to pray when you pray i'll direct you on what else to do all of you who are in front please let me ask you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this from the depth of your heart as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your wonderful hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away i declare that you honor their profession of faith and in the name of jesus we declare that you are recipients of eternal life indeed the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight we call you sons of light and we decree and declare that darkness is on its way out of your life never to return again in jesus name now two instructions very quickly please can you give me one of these cards just for you to see thank you you'll be given a card like this if you have not gotten a card like this like the one i'm holding please be patient keep standing until you are given a card like this you would be expected to fill the card please fill it as as clear as you can and then i'm sure that um the one half most likely would be for you whereas the other you would pass it to the counselors are they going to follow the counselors or they just feel just a moment Okay, so you're going to feel it while you're standing. Now, please don't go back to your seat with it. Um, if they don't have pens, virus to write someone, do well, be a good Samaritan, help them with the pen so that they feel it right here in front. We're patient to allow you, um, it's yours. Please complete it and then you hand it over to the counselors and then I'm sure that afterwards you'll be back to your seat and um, when, and when they do call for those who just gave their lives to Christ, please do well to identify with them so that you can be followed up properly in jesus name now just two instructions and then we're done tomorrow there is a morning session i understand let me encourage everyone please and please um do your best as much as you can to be here and if for any reason you are not able to be here do your best to at least connect online i believe that it will be online so that you listen because tomorrow now we're going to begin to deal with the keys of the kingdom and then as we always do i hope and pray that with the permission of reverend tomorrow night will be a miracle service where we'll take the time to really minister to the needs of people hallelujah so i'm requesting in advance that all of you number one invite as many people i'm sure that extra provisions will be made and then please come with your prayer requests i love to pray for people and their requests write your requests you can receive that of your loved ones who are not here um those of you online i'm sure that there should be the church link the media team will make it available so that you can send in your request and tomorrow we'll have the time to pray to minister to as many and then trust god for a mighty move of his spirit in this place but for now may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus christ your victory as a result of light begins right now in jesus name we have prayed god bless you thank you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap 
the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you